Joining us right now is Lockheed Martin's chairman and CEO, Jim Takelet, with our very own Morgan Brennan. Welcome to you both. Morgan? Thanks, Kelly. And Jim, welcome to The Exchange. Thanks for being with us today. Sure. Good afternoon, Morgan. Hi, so, Kelly. So as Kelly just mentioned, it was a mixed quarter. Supply chain challenges have been in focus now for a number of quarters, and not just at Lockheed Martin, but really across the industry in general. Is it safe to say, given the fact that you're ma maintaining full-year guidance, that the worst is now over? Uh, yes, that's right, Morgan. So uh, we had a solid start to the first quarter of 2022 financially. Uh, we actually had margins higher than expected and cash flow higher than expected also. Uh, revenue is a little light uh, because of the, so the COVID impacts that you do, uh, kind of referred to there. And what really is going on, uh, both in our suppliers' factories and in our own, is uh, starting with the suppliers, uh, you know, they uh, get cases either on or off the job. Uh, they then have to quarantine people from that plant or that office or that engineering facility. Uh, work doesn't get done. Components do not get then shipped to Lockheed Martin, where we have our plants and factories and offices, where we would then assemble those components and parts. Uh, and above all of that is, uh, unlike many industries, uh, our industry typically uh, bills and, and receives revenue on a progress methodology. In other words, it's a uh, payments periodically uh, on the way to having a completed product, not just when you complete the product and deliver it. So with those progress type payments, if you don't get the components in or you can't install them because your people aren't there in the factory, that actually reduces the revenue. It's a period issue here for us where we think, again, we can make it all up by the end of the year here okay. uh, and hold our guidance. So speaking to that guidance, uh, as your CFO, Jay Malavi, told me, the impact of the war in Ukraine is not factored into those numbers. And we've seen weapon systems like the Javelin missile that you make with Raytheon being shipped to Ukraine. Do you actually expect to see incremental sales? And would you expect to see that demand materialize this year? If so, where? Well, the stocks that are being depleted, uh, both in the U.S. Army and among our allies, are eventually going to have to be refilled, of course. And based on the threats that have emerged out of the Ukraine conflict, unfortunately, uh, we do think that overall demand for defensive weapons like Javelin and Thad and Pac-3 are going to increase broadly over time. Uh, those uh, uh, revenue effects, again, will be in a longer cycle because even mm -hmm. if we were to get orders in this year, uh, we've got to get our supply chain ramped up. We've got to add some capacity, which we're already investing to do, by the way. Uh, and then the deliveries happen, you know, say 6, 12, 18 months down the road. So there should be some uplift, but uh, we don't necessarily uh, have it wired into our guidance for 2022. Yeah, so a matter of how quickly production can ramp. I mean, the world has definitely become a more dangerous place in recent months. How would you assess the geopolitical landscape, especially since defense spending is now globally poised to move more meaningfully higher? Well, I think in a nutshell, unfortunately, the, the world has changed. Uh, with the invasion of Ukraine by Russia, it's been really the first uh, major global power um, invasion of a neighboring country to gain territory. Uh, and, and we haven't had a security threat of that nature, especially in Europe, uh, North America, or, or most of Asia, uh, involving a great power. Uh, for many, many decades. And so this is un an unfortunate game-changing event. And it's highlighting the fact that the world is not a secure place. It's, it's insecure and, and potentially getting worse. And therefore, the importance of deterrence, which I feel like Lockheed Martin's product really is deterrence. The value of deterrence to society and to the free market economies of, of the world is as high as it's been since the, the middle of the 20th century, frankly. And Therefore, uh, the kinds of capabilities that our company and our, our cohort companies have in aerospace and defense are going to get more important over time and stay that way for a while. And so we feel that uh, the way to really address this, to raise deterrence more quickly than you can otherwise do, mm. is to really accelerate the adoption of digital 21st century technologies into the defense enterprise to make sure our defense deterrent against war is as strong as it can be as fast as it can get there. Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.